So in this video, we will start to learn inflation. So we recognize inflation as the second of the two major macroeconomic problems we can face. So I hope you still remember our first macroeconomic problem, which is unemployment. So that's what we learned in chapter six. So in this chapter, we will learn the second major macroeconomic problem, inflation. So when we study the inflation, and we have to focus on the following three core problems. So the first one is, what kind of price increases are referred to as inflation? Second, who is hurt and who is helped by inflation? And last one is, who is uh, what is the appropriate goal for price stability? So our ultimate goal is try to understand what is the proper goal for price stability. In another word, so what is the best inflation rate so that the economy can run it healthily? So before we introduce in the definition of inflation, we have to review a little bit about the history of the inflation. So first, starting from Germany. So high inflation has occurred in Germany in 1923, and later in uh, Hungary, Russia, Japan, uh, Zimbabwe, and other countries can cause economic collapse. So some people are talking about World War, why World War II happened. So they are blaming on the hyperinflation in Germany. So, but my that might be the reason. And so <clears throat> during this period, in in Germany, people find actually no one saved, invest, and made the long wrong plans. The reason is as they are keeping their money for a long time, their money get less valuable. And so, and also what they found during this period is the production came to a halt and unemployment increased by a factor of 10. And so it's really bad in that, uh, during that period in Germany. And so the, ultimately, uh, Hitler came to power. So then he kind of tried to uh, transfer their domestic uh, conflict to international war. So that's definitely a bad um, solution. And so, as I mentioned, the Zimbabwe experiencing the similar um, experience, the similar uh, happening, the similar thing happening in Zimbabwe as well. So, Zimbabwe experienced a similar economic disaster between 2007 and 2010. So that's what I mentioned in the introduction video. So they even issued the one trillion notes. So that doesn't help the economy, but creating inflation. So this is not uh, unique in a European country or the country outside U.S. Actually, U.S. has um, uh, has has ever, never experienced such a price raise. And in 1971, the Nixon administration took a drastic action to stop inflation. As Nixon took office, prices were rising three percent per year. So as I said, U.S. could experience the similar. Uh, things, but it didn't happen because we have um, better uh, policy makers make a better decision. So during 1971, what happened is the federal government imposed price controls on American producers to keep prices from rising any faster. And for 90 days, all wages and prices were frozen by law. For three more years, wages and price increases were limited by legal rules. So that's why. Every time you hear, oh, my wages is increasing, and hopefully just from your company. If everybody's wages increasing, it's very likely to creating the inflation. And so another case in 1990, the inflation rate in the United States was about 6%. And uh, Alan Greenspan, chairman of the Federal Reserve, asserted that it was unacceptable and set a goal of 0%. And so pursuit of this goal might require us to forsake other macro goals, like we talk about unemployment rates. So this kind of relationship between inflation and unemployment we'll discuss more in our uh, future videos. But here, just to give you a shorter uh, history about uh, inflation. Generally speaking, in America, we actually never experienced our super hyperinflation, but it, it, it did happen in other countries. And so now, after we mentioned about inflation, and we want to do a little bit of a calculation exercise, try to see what is the inflation mean in terms of numbers. So think about the currency price of the good is one dollar, 
if its price doubles every day, so what will its price be in 10 days and in 20 days? So I'll give you one minute to think about it, and later I will ask a helper to help me to figure out the answer. Yes, you're right. In order to figure out what's the price in 10 days, so actually you want only to calculate the uh, since it's one dollar, so you double uh, the price double every day. So which means it will be uh, will double to the the rest of nine days. So it will be two to the power of the nine. So what's the answer for two to the power of nine? So I will ask the Google in my home. Okay, Google, what is the two to the power of nine? The answer is five hundred twelve. Okay, so which means after 10 days, that $1 will be worth $512. How about 20 days? Yes, so you should be very smart to figure out. So that will be 2 to the power of 19. So what's the answer? Okay, Google, what is the uh, 2 to the power of 19? The answer is 524,288. Yes, you're right. So in 20 days, so that $1 will be worth five hundred twenty four thousand two hundred eighty eight dollars so if that's how we are our economy going and you will feel very scared because don't want, you really don't want to put your money in the bank because you know if you put one dollar in today it's no longer worth one dollar after 10 days or 20 days so this kind of factor you can see is very simple calculation is ta talking about what is hyperinflation means it's kind of scary so now we're literally going to look at how people measure we do have inflation and what is our inflation rate. So inflation actually is an increase in the average level of the price. Make sure you understand it is not a change in any specific price of the goods. So what does this mean? So this price of the specific basket of the goods are collected and computed into an average price level for that basket in a year. So the key for inflation is it is not just looking at one product, such as I mentioned at the beginning of this chapter. So you go to a grocery store, you see the milk price today $3, next day $3.25. But for other produce, they never change. So in that case, it doesn't consider as inflation. It just considers as, okay, the milk prices goes up. So make sure you understand for the inflation, usually the government will decide a basket of goods. And later we'll discuss what exactly, what kind of goods exactly in our basket in the United States. So usually we're including the goods from the transportation and your uh, food, your necessary goods, and also your income. And those kind of goods will put in the basket and they will measure the basket and try to look at, okay, on average, the, the price level of this whole basket. So if this whole basket's average price goes up, and we will call it inflation. In the contrary, if the price goes down, and we will call it deflation. And so it is very important for you after you're learning this chapter, you understand how to measure inflation. So when you see one product goes up, price goes up, it doesn't consider inflation. It has to be the whole basket goods price goes up. And so since we discuss about price and I have to compare a, uh, a, a pair of the concept, it's very confusing. So make sure you are not confused. So, um, so you need to understand what's the difference between relative price and our um, average price. So the market mechanism causes the price of the individual goods and the service to rise or fall, and which is an essential market function. And we discuss in chapter three about supply and demand. So if we have more supply, less demand, the price supposed goes down. If we have more demand, less supply, and the price supposed goes up. So this cup up and down changes is pretty normal. And we can call, we will call the relative price change. So the relative price is the price of the one good compared to the price of the other goods. And such as we see when the uh, subway uh, scandal about the yoga mat sub uh, ingredient found in the sub subway spread, and you can see their price dropped compared with the pizza hunts pizza. So it doesn't consider as inflation, but we will consider as a relative price change. So relative price change. 
And so the main cause for the relative price change is buyers switch from one good to another when their relative price diverge. And so the reason we try to compare the relative price is again try to make sure you understand the inflation. So the inflation is only measure the average price change. So inflation is the rise in the average price of all goods. So which means it is not a market function. So if you let market run by themselves, it will not create the inflation. And so the inflation usually is created by the government. So the government. And so that's something financial to keep in mind was the difference between the uh, average price and the relative price. When we talk about inflation, it is talk about the, the rise of the average price, the rise of the average price. So in our next video, we actually going to discuss what's the effects of inflation.